grace, power, ministry, and love. Incline your ears to wisdom and your hearts to understanding. Receive the word of God according to knowledge. Welcome to preach, to preach, to preach. Be a voice, not an echo. Join Minister Chantrell for today's message. Good day, beloved, and thank you for joining me today. My name is Minister Chantrell, Ambassador of the Word of Reconciliation according to the Word of God. Today is February the 28th, 2017. It is 1125 a.m. Central Time, and I'm going to begin with prayer. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you that I'm alive for such a time as this. I bless your holy name, Father. I force my soul to bless you this day, for you are worthy of all reverence, praise, and honor. Father, I thank you that as I slept last night, you opened my ears after hiding pride, and you sealed my instructions for this day, Father. And as I move forth in obedience, full of your purpose, Father, I do it without fear and with boldness, according to your spirit, Father, and not my own soul. Father, I thank you that you have purposed me for this day. You have purposed this word for this day. Father, I thank you that this word will go forth unhindered and unchecked by any outside force, Father. I thank you that greater is he who is in me than he who is in this world, Father. I thank you that the interest of your word gives light, Father. And as I minister your word, Father, I thank you for cultivated hearts, cultivated ears, Father. I thank you for understanding that it's given only of you, Father. I thank you that you have made way for this word, Father. I thank you that you have created doors of bold utterances, Father, in effectual ministry. And I move forth in purpose to operate in the capacity that you called me to operate in, Father. I thank you. I do all things of you and nothing of myself, Father. In the name of Jesus and by the power of the blood, I come against every foul principality, spirit, and force of darkness, Father, that would set itself against this word and every high thing that exalts itself against your true knowledge. And I bind it according unto your word that what I bind on earth is bound in heaven and what I loose on earth is loosed in heaven. And Father, I loose all of your heaven's resources, all of your wisdom, Father, and your purpose and your plan this day, Father. And I yield to it. Your word is energizing. It is alive. It is effective, Father, and it is always enough and they will accomplish the thing where unto it was sent. The words I speak are your words, Father, so they will not return unto me void, Father. They will not return unto you void. And I thank you, Father, for that blessed assurance in the name of Jesus, Father. I pray. Amen. Okay, today's message. <laughs> it's always amazing I get up and I think I'm going to deliver one message and he starts to flood when we were multiple. It's, you know, I sometimes I have to get up and type out two to three messages and lean to him on what is to be delivered today. And he always, always, he, he'll let you know exactly which one is the rhema and exactly which word you need to be delivering today. And that's just what he did. I was getting up, uh, you know, working out. That's our meeting place. I walk and he gives me more revelation on the treadmill and in the workout room because I'm just blessing his name as I'm working out. And I've noticed that a lot of revelation uh, comes during that time, which will explain why sometimes the enemy try to keep me bed early a.m. But uh, I got up today because I forced my soul to bless the Lord. And that's what we have to do sometimes. We have to tell this body to shut up and to get in line with the Holy Spirit that is perfect, that does not grow weary and that is always on time. And that's just what it is. Today's word, and I'm going to try to keep focused because when I'm dealing with different things over here, I got to remember to look at the light because I'll be looking all over the place. <laughs> Today's message that he gave me is knowing his ways and experiencing his acts that they may believe. I don't know why I was on. Well, I know it's always the Lord leading me into that as I'm on the treadmill and I'm walking. I hear people ministering the word. Oh, how great is his ways and knowledge and his ways are past finding out. His ways are past finding out. It's the same thing as they do when they use the fact that his thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are his ways your ways. No, that's, that's what the word said. It's true. But he did not tell you that they could not be your thoughts. He did not tell you that his ways could not be your ways, which is why he tells us to be transformed by the renewing of our mind so that we can think, walk, and act in the ways that he thinks walk and act because we are not separate of him. I want to start reading with Romans 11 and 33. Oh, the depth of the riches, both of wisdom, knowledge of God, how unsearchable are his judgments and, and his ways past finding out. I'm going to read that again in the Amplified. Oh, the depth of his riches and wisdom and knowledge of God, how unsearchable are his judgments and his decisions and how unfathomable are and untraceable are his ways. I'm going to read that again. They're past finding out. Key word. They're past finding out. You can't search nowhere to find his ways. 
I'm going to go down here now to Psalms 103 and 7. And this is what he said to me. As I, I kept pondering on his ways past finding out. And he, he clearly said, I make known my ways. Hmm. They pass finding out. You can't dig nowhere to find this. He has to give it to you, which means you have to be seeking it from him. You have to be spending time with him. You have to be drawing nigh unto him because he, he longs to tell you things, great and mighty things that you know it's not. Jeremiah 33 and 3. He's trying to show you things that you can't possibly know. No mind of any science because they seem to forget where that knowledge comes from. Every great and perfect gift comes from their father of lights. But it's the arrogance that the enemy begins to put in people's mind that they actually begin to think it's them. Has nothing to do with you. Just like a lot of people in Christ, they still think this walk has something to do with them. It's all about Jesus and your belief in what he did. And he will enable you to walk in his ways. I'm going to read Psalms 103 and 7. He made known his ways unto Moses. Pay attention. Slow it down. He made known his ways unto Moses. His acts unto the children of Israel. Pay attention to that. He made known his ways to Moses. His acts unto the children of Israel. I'm going to read that again in the message and amplify it because I felt led to do it because the Lord gave me this. He showed Moses how he went about his work. Hmm. Opened up his plans to the children of Israel. The Bible tells us, the Bible tells us that the word of God tells us that I know my plans for you. Plans to give you a hope in the future. I saw somebody post the other day talking about, Lord, I got my plans all lined out and I'm blessed. No, he blesses his plans. Your job is to be led into the path. That's why he says that his word is a lamp and a light to your path. If he showed you everything, you'd probably take a left or right turn and go somewhere he can tell you to go. So as you follow his word, your feet and your steps are lighted and lit and your path is lit from step to step, from moment to moment, from one degree of glory to another degree of glory. I'm going to read it in the Amplified. He made known his ways of righteousness and justice to Moses. And he let his not, uh, acts be known to the children of Israel. We know what happened to the children of Israel. That particular generation died in the wilderness. They saw his acts. And they died in the wilderness. We know how it went. They complained. They kept saying, oh, Lord, you brought out how to die in the wilderness. We're going to die in the wilderness. We're going to die in the wilderness. And he, he was forced to say what they kept professing. He said, okay, die in the wilderness. So you got to watch what come out your mouth. I don't care what you see. You got to understand that knowing the ways of God is the door to the axe. And that's the difference between having the mantle. The mantle of a man is the ways of God. Knowing why he walks the way he walks. Why the Lord does what he does. How he does it. Those are his ways. You need to understand that a mantle is not about a man. It's not about a man. It's not about a mantle. You see people that start following the person. And it's the mantle up on that person. And anything one person has, you can have if you draw near. The Lord gave me notes and I put the mantle is why and how a man or woman of God is how they walk the way they do. It's how they're able to hold themselves the way they hold themselves. And it is because of what they understood of God. It is because of what they understand and understood of God is how they were able to walk in the ways that they walked and do the acts that they did because the walk, the mantle, brings forth the acts. You don't want to just see the acts of God and not know his ways. And I can promise you in these last days, you're going to have to know his ways to survive. You're going to have to hear his voice and you're going to have to know his ways. And that is the only thing that is going to keep you because there's only safety in, we know, Jesus Christ, the anointed one, Yahshua HaMashiach. Whatever name you want to call him, because it's Jesus, the Christ, our Lord. You have to know his ways. That's the difference when you look at Elisha, when Elijah was taken up into heaven by fire, because we know he didn't die. And he asked for a double portion. His mantle fell to the ground. And some of the other prophets went to go search him. They said, let us go search. And Elisha told them not to. But they kept whining and nagging him until he said, okay, go look. They went looking, you know, because they know the Lord could have moved him. They just tell you what they was used to seeing because the Lord could have moved him somewhere unless they said they, unless the Lord put him on some other mountaintop somewhere. So they went days looking. And when they came back, Elisha said, did I not tell you not to go look for him? Because Elisha understood at that moment it was about the mantle. Why do you think he took that shirt and when he hit that water, he said, where is Elijah's God? 
He didn't no longer say, where's my father? Where's Elijah? He said, where's Elijah's God when he smoked that water and that water poured it? And he had a double portion of Elijah's anointing on him. And anyone that does the research know that Elijah did 18 miracles. Elisha did 36, exactly double what he asked for. But I'm going to stay on course. You notice when he took that, he struck the water and he said, where is Elijah's God? His ways. I'm going to read Psalms 25 and 4. Show me thy ways, O Lord. Teach me thy paths. David prayed this, and you will find this all through the Bible. Just Google it. You're going to find how the people who knew and understood that it was the ways of God and his mantle and his presence that show me your ways. I'm going to read that again in Psalms 119 and 169. Let, me cry, let my cry come before thee, O Lord. Give me understanding according to thy word. That's what the Bible tells us in all thy getting, get understanding. You can't find understanding either. You can't search for understanding. You can't study for understanding. He tells you to study to show yourself approved, a workman. He doesn't say study to get understanding because only he gives understanding. Just like only he gives wisdom. Now, there is a devilish wisdom that is earthly and sensual by your senses. That doesn't mean sexy. Senses, sensual, based on only what you see, feel, touch, taste, and what you see other people having. Because there's some people that look like they got a lot and they poor and wretched. Psalms 119 and 44. The, righteous of, the righteousness of thy testimonies is everlasting. Give me understanding and I shall live. The Bible says, blessed are those that feareth and walketh in his ways. Psalms 128 and 1. Blessed is everyone that feareth the Lord that walketh in his ways. Psalms 86 and 11. Teach me thy, teach me thy way, O Lord. I will walk in thy truth. Unite my heart to fear thy name. You hear what he said? Unite my heart to fear your name. Unite my heart with yours. Walk in his ways. Now, the ways of the Lord, his acts and his works, the law. This is what the Lord revealed to me today. Now, we know the way for us now is Jesus. Walk in his way. <laughs> that you may know his ways. Walking in his way causes you to do and act and walk in his ways. So we are to put on Christ. Those of us in this new covenant are to put on Christ. But there was a picture of Christ Throughout the whole Bible, if you study, Jesus was always there. It was a shadow of the substance. All those things were a shadow. And Jesus is the substance of those things that were shown. I say again, anyone who knows and studies, know the law was never meant to make you clean or righteous. The law was to show your need for a savior. The law was to expose sin. That's like some were driving in a country where they don't have a speed limit. If there's no speed limit, you can't break the law by speeding. But once a law has been put into place saying you can't drive over this limit and you do it, it's broken. He said, where there is no law, there is no transgression. And we know that we have put on Christ. So we are no longer in transgression. I'm going to get there. Bless the Lord on my soul. <laughs> I'm going to read John 14 and 6. Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. So moving from his ways to the way. That we operate in his ways, which are the acts. Because a lot of people stop the acts. The acts was a movement that should be still going. That's why you don't see a lot of signs and wonders. Because when the acts started with the apostles, it should be still going. But that time is coming back. This is why this message is being brought forth. And I'm not the only one giving these kind of messages. Grace note. In him, we will walk in and know his ways. By walking in the way, that's Jesus, we will know his ways. The way is the person. The embodiment, the Christ, our Lord, Jesus. The ways are the acts that come forth, the signs and wonders, the results of the acts that come forth. I'm going to read Acts four, Act 14 and 3. Long time, therefore, bold they speak it. And you can read this whole thing to get the whole context of this story. It's about these evil people turning other people from the ways because they want to hear the word. Sound familiar? Long time, therefore, bold they speak in boldly in the Lord which gave testimony, the Lord gave testimony unto the word of his grace. Word of his grace. 
That's why you don't see miracles. It has to be the word of his grace. All these other words, I don't know where they're coming from. If you're not ministering grace, you're not ministering the gospel. The word of his grace and granted signs and wonders to be done by their hands. I'm going to read that again because it needs to be. Long time, therefore, both they speaking boldly. These are the apostles Paul and, you know, which gave uh, boldly in the Lord, comma, which gave testimony unto the word of his grace. He was testifying that, yeah, they minister in my word. And granted. So once he said, yeah, that's my word. He hastens to perform his word to look after it. Not your words. That's why you got to find the word for anything that's going on. There's a word for it. And when you find it in that Bible, it's like watch out devil because he know. Especially when you have the faith. You find it in that Bible and you start professing that word and the Lord will hasten. He is bound to perform his word by his own self, his own oath. He swore by himself and he can't lie. He gave testimony unto the word of his grace and granted signs and wonders to be done by their hands because they were ministering his words. They were walking in the way, which is Jesus. They then began to perform in his ways. Those are the acts. And then the results, the signs and wonders. We got a mighty God. Now, Back to this, knowing his ways to show the acts that they may believe. That's the why. I'm going to read Acts 13, 7 through 12, which was the deputy of the country. Read this whole chapter. I, 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 I would urge you to go read this whole chapter if you haven't. Which was with the deputy of the country, Sergius Paulus, a prudent man. I mean, he ain't stupid. He got some sense. Who called for Barnabas and he called for Saul and he desired to hear the word. OK, I'm going to get on some people about this because this is what the Lord had put on me. But Elamis, Elamis, he was a a sorcerer from Iraq. You have to do your study to know that's where he was from. Elamis, the sorcerer, for so his name is by interpretation. His name is sorcerer. He withstood them seeking to turn away the deputy from the faith. He didn't want him to hear the word. Did that sound familiar? Those people who don't want to hear your word minister because it's you ministering it, but it's the word of God because it's never about me. It's not about anyone else ministering. It's about the Lord. But they don't want to hear it, but then they try to talk other people out of listening. You don't enter in, but you don't suffer those who will go in to go in. That's a Pharisee. He says, thou hypocrite, viper. And that word is still true today. Those who stand in the way and permit, don't permit others who will go in the kingdom to go in, you are a hypocrite. You are a viper, thou child of the devil. Be offended, it's the word of God. We signed up for persecution because they hated him, they gonna hate you. If the people not hating you, you might need to check who you're following. Because he, this is one thing here, sure you're gonna happen. They gonna hate you without a cause. Not with a cause, they gonna hate you without a cause. Let me keep reading. Verse 10 and said, okay, no, verse nine. After he withstood them, he sought to turn the deputy from the faith. Then Saul, who is called Paul, filled with the Holy Ghost. That's the spirit of vengeance. Set his eyes up on him and said, oh, full of all subtlety, all mischief, thou child of the devil, thou enemy of all righteousness. Wilt thou not cease to pervert the right ways, the right ways of the Lord? And now behold, the hand of the Lord is upon thee, and thou shalt be blind, not seeing the sun for a season. And immediately there fell on him a mist and a darkness, and he went about seeking some to lead him by the hand. Then, this is the key word, verse 12, excuse me. Then the deputy, when he saw what was done, <laughs> this is what's about to start happening. I want y'all to pay attention. The Lord is about to know. Let everyone know that there is a God in Israel. There is an almighty God. The deputy, when he saw this, what was done? He believed because he saw this. Being astonished at the doctrine of the Lord. And this is what the, is about to start happening. Because y'all don't understand. The spirit of the Holy Spirit is here to, for recompense and justice. When Jesus was here, his ministry was different. He said, I didn't come to, to kill. I came to, to save the world of sins. And when he said he was, he, he read Psalm 61 to preach the acceptable year of the Lord, he sat down. The Holy Spirit came. That's the spirit of vengeance, recompense, and justice. And that is the spirit by which we operate. 
The spirit is inside you now. The very one that brought the sun back to life is inside of you. And how do we begin to operate in it? Acknowledge him in all his ways. I'm going to read Proverbs 3 and 6. And all thy ways acknowledge him and he will direct thy paths. And I mean everywhere, okay? I want y'all to understand in every way. Even a little example. I was going to a situation, going to court, and a couple other things. And as I began to worship him, I even asked him, Lord, what suit would be best for me to put on? And then I continued because I, it matters to me. I'm acknowledging you in all that I do. And I went to continue to worship him. And no sooner than I went to worship him, he flashed the whole outfit down to the jewelry right in my face. That had never happened. And I put it on. And I promise you, he showed me I had victory before I went in. And I, oh, that I ain't begun the testimony on that yet. Y'all need to understand. That the only way you're going to see the acts of the Lord is by his ways. You don't want to be one of those like the children of Israel. You just sit back. Them are the ones that's going to be saying, ooh, and ah, they, they see the acts of the Lord, but they still don't know his ways. What happened to them? They died in the wilderness. And that is nothing that you want to do is end up dying in the wilderness because all you can do is observe his ways moving through those who choose to yield. You want to be one of those that know his ways and performing those acts. This either one or the other. There is no straddling the fence. There is no gray area. The Lord says that either you, he who gathers with me, if you don't gather with me, you scatter the broad. There's no in between. I ain't in that. You can't say that. Because by saying I ain't in that, you have loudly spoken. He said, choose this day whom you'll serve. You don't get to straddle the fence and say I ain't in it. You in it. You either on one side or you on the other. So you have to strive, make known, cry out to the Lord to make known his ways unto you. It's scripture on it all day. And just tell him according to your word. Give me understanding that I may walk in your ways. Acknowledge him. And I'm just giving definition of acknowledge. I feel led to do that again. To accept someone to be what he has claimed to be. He's God. Almighty God, Jesus, the son of the living God, God in the flesh, who came to surrender his life for man, lay it down, took it back up, came forth with the keys of death and hell and is seated on the right hand of the majesty of the throne of God. And we see the third heavenly places with him. To accept as legally binding and valid everything he say is his government will not end and it is supreme. He is the righteous judge. To express obligation or thanks or gratitude, thanking him every day is acknowledging him. To report receipt of, when you start saying I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, I've been made the head and not the tail. I've been placed above and not beneath. My father owns a cattle of a thousand hills. The wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just. I have the dew of heaven and the fatness of the earth. Declare to be true and admit the existence of reality of the truth. A lot of us are not declaring anything. You are to declare his decrees because his words can't be reversed. Decrees can't be reversed. Expect recognition and presence of the existence of. This is the things we have to start operating in because you will have to know his ways and hear his voice to make it in these last days. You get up every day thanking him. Asking him, thanking him for the understanding we have. The Bible tells us we have the mind of Christ. We hold the thoughts, feelings, and purposes of his heart. The Bible tells us we have an unction from the Holy One and we know all things. And we have to receive that word as truth. No matter what you feel in that day, excuse me, you have to force your soul to bless the Lord no matter what you feel like. Thanking him, praising him, talk about all the good things he's done, extol him. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgiveth all thy iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thy head with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. <laughs> Psalms 103, y'all need to read that, meditate on that. I want you to take this word before the Lord. I pray that this blessed you because this is the time we're living in. He made known his ways to Moses and he made known his acts to the children of Israel. We don't want to be the ones just observing the acts because they died. They died in the desert. They died not having known him. They died not having known his ways. We know that only two that went out of the spider land went across into, into the promised land. 
So you have got to draw near him during this time. It is not a time to play or worry about nobody, what anybody thinks of you. It's not about, it's not about pleasing man. When I say chase a mantle, draw close to God so that you may know his ways. Because we're able to know his ways. And he wants to show us great and mighty things that we know not. And that is going to be to the saving of many lives. And many are going to believe because you're going to walk in his way. That is Jesus. Therefore, you're going to bring forth his ways. Those are the acts. And his miracles granting signs and wonders. And when they see it, they are going to believe. I thank you again for listening. Uh, stay tuned for messages that are to follow. I actually going to uh, record a couple of dreams after this. That's just really like, wow, this is why he gave me this message because it's all connected. Um, so I pray that this blessed you. Please share this. This is an urgent word. It's no different than the what is issued out of your heart. It has to be present in your heart to present before you. A lot of people memorize scriptures, but it's not in their, it's not in their heart. You have to be to conceive this word. So much so, no matter what you see, you do not, you do not falter from that word. That's what he said. You are in need of patience. That's what patience means. Patience don't mean just waiting on somebody and putting up with stuff. It means no matter what you see, your word and belief does not change. He's faithful. His word works. So when something does not work, never look at God. Ask him, Lord, what did I miss? What, what is it that I didn't get? Give me understanding that I may keep your words. Give me understanding that I may walk in your truth. And he will grant it. Again, thank you for joining me. Um, stay tuned. Uh, God bless you. I'm praying with you and for you and continue to pray with and for me. Grace be with you and I love you all. Thank you so much for tuning in this day. Blessings. Thank you for joining us today on Preach. Be a voice, not an echo. We pray that you were encouraged and empowered by today's message. Until next time, we encourage you to hang on to God's unchanging hand and preach. Grace be with you.